Hey guys, Harry here, and we're back again with another Britlane vlog, and we're on another panel of boundary wall. So this boundary wall may look a little bit familiar from uh, quite a few weeks ago. I was doing uh, a small panel of this, and I got quite a bit of different footage of it. It might have even been a month ago I was doing this particular panel uh, that you can see in the background, uh, and then I was just filling in this panel up to the house today. Um, it'd been a bit of a mixed up week, we'd been on this site Monday, we moved, went to another site patching on Tuesday and then we went back here on Wednesday, did that boundary wall footing, then went away and I did some more patching, did a low level roof, um, cut up and then we came back here on the Friday. Um, a bit of a mixed up week, I didn't really know what gear to take with me and what not to take. I could have left most of it here if, I'd a bit, if I'm quite honest. But I took it because I didn't know what site we're on next. Um, you know, it's just one of them things. If, you, if you're unsure, I always took my kit. Um, also, uh, in this particular wall, I was working under a scaffold. This plot needed rendering, so uh, I'd a, it was a part render. So uh, they adapted the scaffold to allow me to fill this wall in and uh, when i get to the top at the end of this more or less at the end of this video uh, i didn't get quite finished i needed about 100 bricks to finish uh, i had the gobbo to do it but it was it was quarter past four on a friday and i did, i wasn't willing to stay another hour to get it finished when i was uh, here on monday <coughs> so uh, when i get this to full height i'm going to put a little bit of tile brick on edge you know you know only about you know 400 mils worth something like that about five you know five bricks or something like that um and then uh you know get it to full out and then it gives the renderer something to render around since this wall was uh like normally these walls would be done after it was rendered but what tends to happen is your bond gets broken where the render you know sort of occurs you know it sticks out 20 30 mil your bond breaks and it makes your wall look a bit you know, I either end up having a massive mastic joint at the bottom to accommodate for your bond or you know you get sort of like a step a staggered broken bond uh, you know part way up your wall so I think this is the reason why they're wanting to build the walls first to stop that from happening and they can render around uh, the wall so it looks sort of gives it a little bit of a cloak so um, yeah, uh, this in, in this particular video as well, uh, I've decided to build two 12 core, you know, 12 course corners. Um, the only reason was is because you can see where my mortar tub is. Uh, there was a, a excavation, a vacuum excavation machine in the background, as you can see, which was blocking my access for getting the tub dropped around the back, which was annoying. Um, and I had to get all my bricks dropped at the front because. Normally, if he could have got for, got in from the other way, he could have boomed a pack right into the back garden, uh, but he wasn't able to do so. So I had to get my bricks on the pavement. So I needed to leave some access for me to be able to get my mortar in. So what I did is I built two 12 course corners all the way up at each side, leaving the middle out to, so I could get to my mortar. And then by that time, I used like a massive board full on each corner. And then I filled those boards all the way back up and then uh, started running in uh, right running in the middle and then i only had to carry about six or seven buckets round and i always carry two buckets at once so it was only about two or three trips with mortar from the pavement around that other panel which saved me a little bit of time i know it doesn't seem you know a big deal having to walk your mortar just round you know an extra 20 steps or something like that but you know, when you're working on your own, I'd, or, I'd already had to load a full pack of bricks out today because I laid about 500. Um, and, you know, loading a pack of bricks out, although it only took me 20 minutes to do that, I was, I was, I was sweating, covered in sweat, uh, you know, and the heat as well. It was like 24 plus degrees today, you know, one of the hottest days that we've had in a while. No wind, humid. And I'm still feeling the effects now. So I had to really conserve my energy today. I was going pretty steady uh, by all accounts, even by myself. When I was working, I was thinking, Jesus, I'm going to have to make today as easy as I can for myself. Uh, because 
it you know there's just no mer- there's no fucking mercy from from the sun uh, and you've got to just you know tone it down a little bit um especially for bigger guys you know i'm you know i've lost a few kilos to be honest i'm i'm back under 120 so i'm about 119 uh 118 kilos uh and i'm trying to move slowly you know drop my weight down but for those bigger guys carrying a lot of muscle mass as well muscle mass makes a massive difference you know you, you it's a lot of you know you're taking a lot of blood to pump around the body into all your muscles and it just takes out of you the heat so it's one of them things that you've just got to be wary of i know a lot of smaller guys tend to not uh, you know feel it as much obviously the more the more muscle you have the more water is held inside those muscles so you need more uh, basically more hydration that's one thing I'm basically going to work on I had about three liters of water today I want to get back to drinking six I was drinking double this before to keep hydrated obviously you need to you know you're going to need to go to the toilet more often you're going to be pissing a lot so you know be prepared to have to break off to go to the uh go to the facilities um and you know just you know it might take you an extra five minutes to keep walking to the toilet but you'll feel a lot better and it'll probably increase your performance your speed everything just staying hydrated so that's probably one of the biggest things i can recommend is staying hydrated i need to be my old man pulls me up about it all the time I've, I've slacked on my hydration in the past couple of uh, the past couple of months, which I was always a massive advocate for. So I'm going to pick up on the hydration. I'm going to carry two. Uh, I'm going to carry three two liter bottles with me to work. I've got a cooler actually. I've got a cooler um, which I have, uh, which I, I I used when I went on holiday. I bought it from Morrison's for a tenner. I'm going to fill that with some ice on the morning. Bag of ice is a quid. Bottles of water, you know, twenty, you know, twenty-five pence a bottle uh, for, for you know big massive bottles of water in big packs. So get a few bottles of water in there and just keep drinking. I know sometimes you don't feel like drinking; it bloats you up sometimes. But getting that hydration in, uh, even when you feel like you're not sweating or you're not too hot, you're just losing moisture all the time. So it's it's one of them key things you've got to do. Just keep your keep your speed at work. Keep your keep feeling good. It's the biggest factor, and even as well, having a chocolate, having a little bit of uh, bit of carbs with you, like a rice crispy treats, awesome. You know the rice crispy squares, uh, they're probably one of the best things to keep. You know, keep your energy on site. I always, I always uh, get a pack of them, uh, or some Nature Valley bars or something like that. Shove them in me, in my rucksack, which you can see in the background, which I carry around me all, at all times. Um, just keep your energy up that's the main thing uh, especially you know we're working three four hours in between breaks a lot of the time and uh it's it's one of them things that obviously with myself i'm only having one break uh, but as soon as you finish work as well i advocate eating something as well as soon as you finish working eat something eat a bit of carbs never mind all this it'll spoil your tea just fucking get it in you get feeling better straight away so that's that's one of the biggest things um, today I wasn't wearing my vest, which I normally wear. Uh, you see me wearing string vest uh, or me, you know, one of my normal vests, or sleeveless. So the reason, it, because I wear this, isn't for any sort of va- any vanity purpose. With you know, you know, get, you know, guys who are always going to gym, they want to show off, etc. But for myself, you know, I've got no to show off. I'm like fucking you know i'm 20 percent body fat probably or something ridiculous i've uh it's been a long time since i've had abs so uh i uh, i just wear the vest to keep keep you know uh, ventilated keep my body cool ideally i just sometimes wear the ivy's vest but you know there is women walking around on site you know there's a few uh, a couple of women who were walking around on site and i don't know if i'll get reprimanded you know, having my tits out for everyone to see. So I've done it a few, did it a few times at footings. No one said out, but um, you know, wherever there's when, when management are walking around, that they don't like you to just have your uh, have your have your tits out all the time. So it's one of them things. Women can't do it, so you know why should men in a in a sense? Uh, but yeah, I uh, I will be doing that a bit more in summer. Uh, I didn't bring me some, and as well, I didn't bring enough sun cream today. I normally bring me Factor Thirty. I was uh, I skimped on it this today because I thought it'd be cloudy and just you know even sun cream as well. That 
that stops you feeling knackered as well. If getting plenty of sun cream on really helps with, you know, uh, you know, blocking that sun out, out of, blocking that sun from, you know, penetrating your body in a sense. So yeah, um, uh, no pillars in this one obviously because I'd already built the pillars. Expansion at each side, you know, same old stuff from the last video. Not really much to speak about in that sense. Um, I've got a little bit of a modified technique for the smiley line, uh, you know, method with the fits brick. Uh, what I tend to do is I still set up for a smiley line, <coughs> and then when I'm pulling the tension on one fits brick, I just pull it. Uh, I don't pull it fully tight. I just pull it, you know, so it's tensioned and then move my line up so that'll slacken a bit of tension as well because every time you move your line up you'll slacken a bit of tension off and then i only have to move the line i only have to adjust the line every two bricks so i would be able to get two movements out of the fits brick you know out of the fits brick clamp uh, i'll be able to do two cores without without having to tighten it and then every two cores tighten and you get a really good um you know it makes it a lot quicker than having than resetting it every course like i was before so if you use it where you just pull it taut uh, before you before you move your fits brick up on your tingled side, and then it'll slacken it off a bit, which will stop it, which will stop it, you know, of attentioning, and you know, cockling up on the fits brick, and then obviously the next course it'll be mega slack, uh, so you'll be able to just pull your fits brick over uh, once you've lifted up on your tingled side. I recommend. I recommend lifting up on your non-tingled side first, and then your tingled side, and that gives you that gives you that extra slack tension to uh, to to yank your fits brick a bit more. So, it's uh, it's ideal, you know. It's one of them things. The fits brick now I've got, you know, pretty much mastered using it in a lot of ways. It just makes the day so much easier. Um, it, it saves time, you know. You're moving your line up, you know in triple quadruple the time it would be to bang a pin in each side it's just so much quicker it's basically the same as the same speed as moving a corner block up uh, but in some respects faster because you're not having to travel the length of the wall you're only traveling the length of your rack so uh, that's that's to, that's basically what it simulates moving a corner block up um, you know and you know it's not it's, it's not like banging a pin in it's not going to weaken your wall it's going to be, you know, your wall's going to be stronger. And uh, especially when you're even using corner blocks on a big gable, like a lot of guys do these days, you know, running out two big racks, you're just using the fit brick instead of moving your corners up and down, your corner blocks up and down a lot quicker. You know, you stay in one spot a lot of the time when you're trying to get a lot in. And I'm a big, I'm a big uh, advocate for it. When it comes to these panels where the, up to the pillar, uh, obviously at the moment I'm building big corners, but I'm going to try in the future uh, getting some, get, you know, breaking out my big set of F clamps and clamping a profile onto the top and bottom um, just to try out profiles on each side. You know, I'm not 100% sold on whether profiles are, are even quicker, uh, you know, for this, for my particular style. I much prefer corner building. I know it is a little bit slower than running in, but when I'm working on my own like I was today, you know, you're having to stop to load your motorboards up and everything. You're having to stop to join. Um, without being truly one-on-one -on -one with a highly, highly uh, fit and young labourer who's, you know, speeding around, pointing up for you, doing everything for you, these little increases like profiles in, on certain, in certain scenarios you're not really gaining much speed from it when uh, if you're having to either you know change the way you work to let your laborer keep up like I do with my dad or you've got um, a lot of time as well if you're using profiles in summer you know you long stretches of brickwork going off really quick whereas corners a lot more manageable so that this is the argument versus corners versus profiles probably in winter Profiles are an absolute must for walls like this. Long stretches at once, easily enough time for the bricks to go off without, you know, getting any sinkage from or, or like a, a leaning out of a corner with wet bricks. If you've ever tried to build a corner with wet bricks, absolute nightmare. You know, it sort of sponges all over, has a little bit of a uh, bit of a goalpost effect where you put your level up it and then it just, you know, 
sort of sp like sort of springs springs on your level. It's like a spring effect, um, and that's something that you know I'm going to talk about when it comes more to winter. I've got, I'm actually quite you know apart from losing a lot of time, uh, which is a shitty side of Brit Lane. It's the downside. I'm looking forward to making videos in the winter time because a lot of the time. Uh, there's different met different methods you got to do. You have got to use different tactics, and uh, you know a lot of guys. If you not if you don't use the right tactics or right strategies when building in winter, you can really make it hard for yourself. So this is one thing I can't wait to uh, cover to talk. You know to cover on uh, on 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 fu in future videos. Obviously, we've got another three, four, even five months left of summer, uh, so it's going to be. It's going to be, uh, you know, plain sailing from for the next six months, basically, till Christmas. And then it normally starts getting uh, colder uh, uh, in January. January is your real cold month, so, and wet month, so, uh, and so yeah. I'm drinking a Cobra beer tonight uh, in bottles. <coughs> Biggest thing that I've, that's allowed me to lose a little bit of weight in the coming, uh, in the last month or so. It is just switching from drinking cans of beer to bottles. You know, that little bit redu reduction in calories. Each one you grab out of the fridge, there's less in it. There's, you know, a good 100 mil less, you know, per per drink you pick up. And uh, I find personally that, you know, I'm, I'm able to just, you know, you know, beer is my Achilles heel. It's the only reason I basically maintain my body fat I'm at now. If I basically stopped drinking, uh, in a nutshell, I'd be a lot leaner, probably a lot faster at work, a lot less knackered. And uh, it's one thing I should really take more, you know, care in. Uh, but I'm still doing my powerlifting training at the moment, doing deadlift only at a weekend. Uh, I'm going to be doing some deadlifts probably either Saturday or Sunday um, this weekend. I'm recording this on Friday, which obviously is the day I worked. Uh, so... You know, it's one of the things I'm trying to maintain strength as well. That's the reason why I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm hesitant, hesitant to really drop loads and loads of weight. Uh, but it is something that is benefiting me. I'm feeling a lot better. Every kilo I lose, I'm feeling like a lot fitter on site, a lot faster. Just everything in general. Uh, so tomorrow's, so Monday, sorry, Monday's job. Um, we're doing another panel of brown wall, but. The downside of this one again, there's a scaffold round. It isn't as restrictive. Uh, there's just basically where where I'm gonna be stood. Uh, there is, you know, where I'm gonna be stood. There's gonna be a bar between me and the wall. So from what I can see, I think I'll just be able to remove it without any issue because no one will be working above me because the roof. Uh, trusses aren't ready for the level roof I'll be working uh, next to. Uh, there's a little scaffold cloaking where this wall is, but it's a, a bigger panel. Uh, I'm sure this next panel, uh, it's not the squint one that you can see in the backdrop. Um, it's off screen. It's just like a two pillars and a straight panel. And I'm sure it's at least a 18 to 19 bricker. Um, I set that a boundary wall out obviously on Wednesday uh, with that had three squints and the only thing I fucked up about one of them is that I didn't get the pillar completely orientated um, at the same angle as the squint on the on the last you know on the sort of first squint of, of the first pillar of the first squint uh, which will just slow the build down by probably like fucking five, ten minutes out of the whole time building that panel. Uh, but, you know, the, that boundary wall was on every one of the walls was on a squint. This one only has one squint in it, which is nice. Uh, I have to leave that down to give the ground workers access, so this next panel I jump onto will be uh, a lot better to work on. Um, with it being with it having two pillars in and it being like a, I'm estimating by just looking at it at least a sixteen to nineteen bricker, uh, brick long wall. Hopefully, uh, you know I could get potentially. So say if it's sixteen bricks long and I'll take it to full height, which would be like twenty three. So one hundred and sixty times two. 
is 320 at plus 45 so that's like 300 and that's like 370 bricks each skin times that by two which is 740 plus the pillars which is about another 400 bricks 740 1140 probably close to 1200 bricks in that in that particular panel of uh, boundary wall so hopefully uh, i don't get stopped by any rain next week which i think it has give some rain at some point uh hopefully i can uh get a two days out of that panel that'd be nice you know 600 bricks a day is ideal uh today i did 500 on my own and then you know normally with the old man i I do about between six and seven hundred brick. If I do six, I'm happy. You know, I don't make quite as much. Obviously, paying me all man's uh, wage, um, it it doesn't really, it, you know, it doesn't speed me up enough to basically make his wage. You know, he isn't making me money in uh, in you know working with me, uh, but it makes the day a lot easier. It makes the day a lot easier, and I get to finish earlier. Uh, the days me and me all man work together, I finish. You know. If we start, if we get walling by half eight, I'm normally finished by like uh, half three, quarter four. If we get delayed for some reason or we get there later, it's normally a four o'clock finish. Uh, but I don't work much longer than four o'clock uh, at all. I just, you know, I just wrap it up and it is what it is what we've got done. Um, it does make a difference, obviously, having to load all your own gobble and bricks. It does slow you down considerably. The temperature has a big factor, which I touched on at the beginning of the video. You've got to have these, you know, take into consideration access like scaffolds. This scaffold slowed me down a good, I'd say, 100 bricks. So if I was working, well, if this scaffold wasn't here, I'd have probably laid an extra 100 bricks, which would basically have, have probably have finished the panel. Uh, and if I'd have got my gobbo closer this morning, I probably could have got it, you know, I could have got easily this panel done with ideal tub placement and brick placement. Um and I didn't get I didn't get my bricks till quarter to nine and I'd have loaded out by nine o'clock and I didn't get here till quarter past eight so I was late considering normally when I'm flat starting on my own I'm here at half seven well I'm sort of on I'm on site at quarter past seven uh, and then I'm like sort of out on the out on the wall at half seven you know sort of loading bricks or getting the first first pack of bricks in my first tub but like half seven quarter basically half seven really but the footless driver brings your gear so um very 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 basically lax today for me uh but sort of 500 bricks is sort of the minimum amount that i lay on my own um it's it's, it's just a good benchmark to really to really gauge yourself you know if you can lay 500 bricks on your own in a day um it shows that you're covering far above any sort of day work rates i know day work only goes up to about 200 225 250 in some places but that far 500 bricks far outstretches you do your day work uh if well, you know a lot of guys who are on 600 thou these days 500 bricks is 300 quid so you know if you can lay 500 bricks a day you're fucking you're on to you're on to like a, a you know a 1500 pound a week you know you know to potential earning uh which is you know easier said than done but i'm i were on 550 and it's you wouldn't believe how hard it is to continuously you know find enough work in front of you to keep laying those five six seven hundred bricks a day i know myself it would take me to lay that amount of bricks in a week i'd have to have this whole wall to do so i'd have to have this panel that i'm doing today uh so with the old man call this panel a day the other panel you know a day uh and a day and a half squint panel half a day uh so that'd be like three days for them three panels and then run with that other panel would take me two days so that i'd have to have all those panels a wall to go at in one day to sort of make that make that total wage you know to make to lay them that many bricks is what i estimate 1200 bricks for that panel maybe like a thousand for the one with the pillars in it's it's uh it's a lot of bricks you know you need two and a half thousand three thousand bricks really and uh it's it's hard to come across that amount of work 
as a one and one in front of you to be able to make big money but it's one of the things that you you can all you can only work when you can work you can only w do as much as what's in front of you and then you know everything else is just left to uh you know left to chance in a sense <laughs> so anyway guys thanks all for watching i know i've been a little bit rambly in this video but if you guys have enjoyed give it a like subscribe hit the notification bell leave us a comment let us know, let us know what you think and i'll see you tomorrow uh, with another episode i'm not going to make videos on sundays anymore it's going to be like just for me and the missus uh, i'm going to probably make have a couple of days off a week probably having to have thursdays off and sundays so we're going to have five videos a week and i might make some shorts in between if you enjoy these these bits of lifting footage i can include my training footage as well so uh, it's whatever you guys want to see leave a comment anyway guys have a good weekend and i'll see you guys tomorrow